Okay, in the last video, we left off things just after installing Comfy UI. Right now, we're going to create a simple workflow for the STXL model. A stable diffusion model has improved over the years and the versions change a lot. But there are three most used models that you can use right now. Of course, you can explore everything and other models in order to see what benefits you the most. But three most used general models are STXL models, ST1.5 and the flux models. The variation of each one of them are vast, but we are going to choose something that is a generally a good model. Of course, you can pick much more specified model for anime or realistic or animals, but we are going to pick a model that have everything inside without too much hassle. But now like in the models, LoRa's and other things, I'm going to use the civitai.com site. To do that, simply click on the models and in the filters, you can select what type of the model you want. The checkpoint is the main model. You can generate the images without the checkpoint. You might be familiar with the LoRa's or control nets, but for now, we're focusing on the checkpoints. So click on the checkpoint and in the base model, as I said, SD 1.5 and there is a different versions, SDXL and the flux models should be somewhere around here. Flux, flux 1S and 1D. S is stands for Schnell and D for Dev. We're gonna jump into the Dev or Schnell Flux models in the later videos. For now, we need only the STXL model. Click on that. So we're going to download the checkpoint or a model for the STXL. And don't forget to put the time on the all time. And as you can see, the Juggernaut XL is one of the most important models with 20, almost 25K likes. And there are good other models too, anything XL. It seems that it emphasizes on the anime style. Dream Shaper Excel. You can see everything and explore that. And if you have a good internet and enough hard disk space, you can actually experiment with those you think you, you're gonna like. So click on the Juggernaut Excel. In my case, you can see the examples of the image generated body models. And keep in mind, these are the best images that you can create with this model. Probably you need to adjust a few things in order to achieve the same result. Okay. Here, right click, save link as, and here go to your directory of your uh, Comfy UI. In my case, Comfy UI, models, and we are downloading the checkpoints or models. So we're gonna download it in the checkpoint folder. Just select the checkpoint folder and click save. I, I already have the Juggernaut as Excel, but you need to download it first. Okay, now that we have the model, we need to assemble a workflow for SD Excel. In the Comfy UI, you can add nodes for the workflow in two ways. Right click, add node. These are the Comfy UI basic nodes, and these are the add ons that you're going to install throughout your journey. So, for the first and basic workflow of the STXL, we're not going to install any type of add on for now. We're going to use a lot of add ons later down the line, but for now, we have everything in the Comfy UI basic and default UI. So, we just need to go to the manager that we installed in the last video, then click on the update all. This is gonna update all of your add-ons and your comfy UI. Just wait a little bit to update. Okay, when your updates are done, you see this menu and just click on the restart. Okay, and wait for the new window to restart your comfy UI. Originally, you had to come here and close this console window, then reopen it, in order to restart your Comfy UI. But with Comfy UI Manager, you can just click on the restart and it's gonna go through the process of the restarting your Comfy UI. You need just to wait for the Comfy UI to boot up. And when that happens, you see a new tab is gonna open and we're gonna just close the old tab. We can just close it right now and wait for the new Comfy UI tab to open. Okay, the new Comfy UI tab is opened up it means that the Comfy UI is booted up completely. And now we're creating the workflow for the SD Excel. So double click and search for load checkpoint. Add that. And here select the Juggernaut Excel. Our model has the model clip and VAE at the same time. You can see the models that have different VAEs or separate VAEs and separate clips and especially in the flux models, these three are separate. But for the Juggernaut Excel, 
we have three of them at the same time in one package. Uh, double click and text clip encode prompt. This is gonna be our positive prompt. Click it, Control C, Control V, and this is gonna be our negative prompt. Let me teach you something. Let's connect these two together, and where you're going to copy something, Control C. If you want to paste that with the connections, for example, the clip to this clip, press Control Shift and V. It copy a new node with the same connection. That's just a little tip that I thought you might need. Click on this, right click, colors, green. And this one, the same thing, but red. This will indicate that this is a positive prompt and this is a negative prompt. And we can double click here to change the name. Another thing is we can actually create the nodes by expanding the output nodes of the already existing node. For example, the conditioning, if we left click and drag it somewhere, we're gonna see the possible nodes that can connect to this one. That's another thing that you can use and we're gonna utilize the same thing. Click on the model, drag here and select case sampler. Okay, connect the positive to the positive prompt and the negative to the negative prompt. From the latent image, click and drag here and select empty latent image. We're gonna use the resolution 124 to 124. And keep in mind, increasing the resolution is actually increasing the render time of your image. From the latent, click and drag, VAE decode, connect the VAE to VAE, from the model to the VAE decode, and from the image, click and drag, and you can actually use preview image. It only previews your generated image, and if you want, you can save that, or you can use save image and it will save everything and you can delete things later if you don't need them. You can put a prefix for your images, anything you like, I don't know, for example, test, test one, test two, and so on. For the case sampler options, you're gonna see a few things in the documentation of your model. If you open up the Jackernot Excel and show other things, we're gonna see the sampler that's recommended. We're gonna see the recommended resolution is 832 by 1216 for portrait. And the sampler DPM++ 2M STE. So we're, for the sampler, we're gonna use DPM, PP is stand for plus plus, 2M STE. It's this sampler. It steps 30 to 40, we use 35, CFG 3 to 6. Less is a bit more realistic. So we're going to use 5 or maybe even 3 to see what's the result. It recommends to start with no negative and add negatives later down the line if you want to filter something out of your image. It even said which high res model you can use, but we're not going to use it yet. It doesn't mention what type of scheduler you select, but generally for the STXL, I use CRAS or sometimes I use SGM uniform. Let's see what CRAS gives us. We're gonna leave the negative prompt empty and we're gonna give it a positive prompt. An angry cat playing video games. Next thing I should tell you is the seed and the control after generate. The simple explanation is the same seed is gonna almost generate the same image every time with the same prompt. So if you don't change your prompt, but your seed changes, you're gonna see a new and different image. But if you fix a seed, for example, I put from the randomize, I put on the fixed and I put something, it doesn't matter, 10. With the same prompt, same model, and same settings, with the seed 10, it's gonna generate the same image every single time. Let us test this. Click on the Q prompt. As you can see, it's loading the model. In each point, it shows you with a green outline that which step it's trying to pass. If you get an error, you see a red error here, and that step is going to be outlined with a red outline. 
Green means it's already in this step. So we just need to wait. The first time you're loading the models, it took a bit more, but after that, it's gonna generate a lot faster because the models are already loaded and ready to use. Even the first case sampler process is take much longer than the others. The generated video is a cute cat. <laughs> and of course, he's angry. But as I said, if you don't change the seat and press Q prompt again, each single time we get the same image. But if we put the fix into the increment, increment means increasing each time an image is generated. Decrement is decreasing that and randomized is totally a random number. Increment, and keep in mind, the numbers closer to each other are much closer result than totally the random numbers. So click Q prompt, the same image because that was the seed number 10 and seed number 11. Let's see what it generates. As you can see, it actually using case sampler again. And already the seed number is at 12 because it's generating the seed number 11 right now. As you can see, the image is a new image with a new cat, but it is similar to the previous image because the seed number is didn't change so much. If you put it on randomize and let's cancel this one queue and queue prompt again, as you can see, the number is so big that the result should be much more different than this one. As we expected, the result differs much more from the previous images. The cat, the controller, and the background is much more different from previous images. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to use or add the LoRa's into our workflow in order to direct our model in a specific way so that it generates the pictures that we like. Until the next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.